Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Historical Top Tens. Every week this offseason, I'm going to be counting down the best of the best for a random week and a random year in NFL history. Today, we're jumping back in the time machine to 1993 and looking at the top 10 plays from week 7 of that season. At number 10, we start in Pittsburgh for this game between the Steelers and the Saints. Pittsburgh was firing on all cylinders in this one, and plays like this are a big reason why. Third down, and Bill Cowher decides to go to his bag of tricks. Everyone thinks it's going to be a snap to quarterback Neil O'Donnell, but instead it's a direct snap to running back Leroy Thompson for the first down. Pretty solid acting job by everyone involved, all things considered. We'll have more from this one later. At number 9, let's head to Foxborough where the Oilers and Patriots are playing. Cody Carlson getting the start of quarterback for the Oilers over Warren Moon. Questionable decision to say the least, but he's proven the coach is right with plays like this. He avoids the rush and the stack, steps up, runs into the outside, and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Not the fastest guy by any means, but even despite that, he's able to turn a broken play into something special, as the Oilers win it 28-14. Coming in at number 8, let's head to the Silverdome, Seahawks against the Lions. Barry Sanders is a beast, and everyone knows that, but I'm not even sure that this run is even close to one of his best ever, just because the standards are so high. But it doesn't make it any less impressive. How many guys in the league can do this? Take it to the outside, then hit him with the spin move. He just spun Pro Bowl safety Eugene Robinson out of his shoes and picked up 28 yards on the play. Heck of a run by a heck of a player. More from this one later. At number 7, let's go to the Meadowlands where the Giants and the Eagles are facing off. Mike Sherrard reviving his career in New York with plays like this one. Sims hit Sherrard over the middle. Easy enough, but then watch what he does next. Bounces off multiple Philly defenders, then switches field and takes it all the way down to the red zone, down at the 15-yard line. Busted out all the skill moves on this one to evade the entire Philly secondary, and if he found a way to get into the end zone, there's a chance this could have been the top play. But we're not through with this game. Coming in at number 6, let's head to the Georgia Dome for this Thursday night football game between the Falcons and the Rams. Man, did the people at TNT get a show on this day, because there were quite a few plays like this one. Check this catch out. How did Henry Eller make this play? He may be in his 11th season, but he's showing no signs of slowing down with plays like this one. He goes to the ground and is somehow still able to corral it with one hand. No balance or other hand, no problem. What a play by the former Pro Bowl wideout. We've got way more from this one coming up. We've hit the halfway point of the top plays, so before we show the top five, it's time to showcase the best hits of the week. These are the best clean hits that rock the guy up for good. It's time for level. And number three, back to Pittsburgh we go. This game is way over. With under three minutes to play, Pittsburgh leads by 30. But don't tell that to Robert Goff, who lays the wood on Tim Worley right here. Drives him to the ground on a clean hit. The game may be over, but Goff isn't giving up, and the opposition knows it because Tim Worley, you just got leveled. At number two, we head to the desert where Washington and Phoenix are squaring off. Keith Rucker just flattening anyone who came his way. Reggie Brooks never saw it coming. He's a rookie, and this was his welcome to the NFL moment. Ran into a semi-truck on this one. Reggie Brooks, you just got leveled. And at number one, it's time we dish some punishment to the quarterback. Browns and Bengals facing off, and for the most part, things went great for the Browns on this day, as they won 28-17. Vinny Testimony threw three touchdown passes. But the play he's going to remember the most in the morning is this one right here. Check out the licking he receives courtesy of Tim Crumry. He loses the ball, and Cincinnati recovers. What a shot. Tough to hold on to the ball when Crumry is doing that to you. Vinny Testaverde, you had a great game, but on this day, you just got leveled. All right, time to get back to the countdown. At number five, we head to San Diego. Chargers against the Chiefs in this AFC West matchup. John Fries just throwing up a prayer from his own end zone, and somehow Anthony Miller is able to come down with it on the juggling grab. The concentration needed to pull something like this off. It's a 43-yard game, the longest of the day for the Chargers. One more time from a different angle. No clue how he came down with it, but Miller had over 100 yards receiving as the Chiefs won 17-14. At number four, back to the middle as we go. Giants and the Eagles. Not a great day for Philly offensively as they were down 21-3 at the time of this play, but even if it was too little too late, this was the highlight of the day. Third down, and Ken O'Brien somehow avoids the sack. He's got all day to throw, and just throws it up to the rookie wideout Victor Bailey for a 41-yard gain. Heck of a play by the offensive line to hold off the pressure as long as possible. Heck of a play by O'Brien to escape the sack and get outside. And a heck of a play by Bailey to make the dive and grab. One of the few bright spots for Philly on this day. Coming in at number three, we head back to Pittsburgh. This play helped set the tone for the whole game. The legendary Rod Woodson already had a pick six earlier, and on the next drive, he had an even better pick. Look at this effort. How on earth did Woodson make this catch, keep his feet in bounds, and have the ball not hit the ground? Blanket of Pat Newman in coverage, and force Wade Wilson into another interception his way. Heck of a day by Woodson, and plays like this are exactly why. 
At number two, we go back to the Georgia Dome. Andre Risen is one of the most electrifying players in all of football, and plays like this are exactly why. How on earth did he make this grab? It's a 42-yard touchdown to give the Falcons the lead. And even though this was a solid throw by Billy Joe Tolliver, it was all Risen on the touchdown. Look at the body adjustment. Look at the agility. Look at how he's able to change his body in midair. And here's the crazy part. This isn't even the best touchdown from this game. We will have more coming up. We've got one more play left, but before we show that, we've got to show the flip side. We've got to show you the worst of the worst. These are your biggest blooper blunders from this week in 1993. And number five, back to Pittsburgh. Hey, when it's your day, it's your day. And this punt return was just how Pittsburgh drew it up. Talk about a lucky break. Deion Figures takes the punt, then fumbles it, but Tim Jordan is right there to catch it. You can even mistake this for a lateral. Even if Figures just got tackled there without losing the ball, it's still the same result as what Jordan eventually did with it. Heck of a break and a pretty funny play. And number four, Rick Meyer has shown some flashes for the Seahawks, but he's had some trouble adjusting to life in the NFL. And this game against Detroit was just not his day. We have not one, but two instances of him just dropping the snap. The Lions won this one 30 to 10, and Myra threw three interceptions, but come on, this is the easy stuff right here. How are you gonna drop two snaps in a game? Not good, my friend, not good. And number three, I'm genuinely not sure if I rank this too low, because this might be the worst snap on a punt I've ever seen. Monday Night Football between the Broncos and the Raiders, meaning that the entire country got to watch this embarrassment. Was this meant to be a fake and Reggie Rivers just wasn't in position? Was this meant to be a regular punt and the ball just slipped out of his hands? Either way, this is definitely not how the Broncos drew it up, and the Raiders won it 23-20. At number two, look, I love you, Steve Young. You're a heck of a quarterback, and at this point, you might even be the best in the league. But what the heck are you trying to do here? Look at this incredible block on the reverse to Jerry Rice. Hey, Steve, you're the leading blocker. Where's the block? You're not supposed to go flying like Superman on a play like this. Your team needs you, man. What are you doing? Cowboys win at 26-17. But at number one, if there was a play that summed up Philly's day against the Giants, this is the one right here. Phil Simms throws an interception to Mark McMillan, who tries to pitch it back to Eric Allen. Want to know why you don't see too many laterals in the NFL? Well, this is why. Give it right back to the Giants, why don't you? He tried to get cute and manned in a backfire in spectacular fashion. One more time from a reverse angle. Next time he gets a pick, you can bet he won't be trying to do something like that again. And with that, it's time for the number one play. We've saved the best for last. Back to the Georgia Dome we go. Prepare yourselves for one of the craziest touchdowns you're ever going to see. And no, the referees did not get this call wrong. This touchdown is that legitimately crazy. Take it away, guys. The numbers uh, up as Everett scrambling around. Nice touch to Cleveland Garrett. He laid that one in there beautifully. Cleveland Gary then knocked down. He gets up again, but he's going to be rolled. No, no, he's not. He's going to he yeah. take it in. That's a head oh, touch. Oh, I have never seen that before. No one touched him. He dove over the defender. I thought he might have been touched. That's a 60-yard catch and run. <laughs> Is that a heads-up play oh. by Cleveland Gary? I know it might seem hard to believe, but watch it from another angle. Cleveland Gary legitimately never got touched. It's a 60-yard touchdown pass, and it's one of the most bizarre touchdowns you will ever see in your life. How not a single Falcon defender brought him down, I have no idea. Even though the Rams lost 30-24, it doesn't take away just how great of a play this was. And with that, that is all for this edition of Historical Top 10s. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jarrogator9, and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See so you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below. And until next time, this is Jaguar Gator 9 signing off.